Hello friends, welcome back to another edition of the Lovecast with Jamal podcast. I am your host, Jamal Javanji. We're going to be talking about this, uh, a really important subject today. We're going to be talking about the concept of midlife either crisis or midlife awakening. Midlife crisis or midlife awakening. Guys, how are you? Welcome back to the show. It's been a few weeks since we posted an episode here, but I'm super glad that you decided uh, to tune back into this podcast and to listen to this episode. And uh, we do have uh, future episodes, new episodes in the pipeline. So let me encourage you, if you're listening to this, but you haven't subscribed to this podcast, the Lovecast with Jamal podcast, let me encourage you to subscribe. Uh, if you're on listening on iTunes, subscribe on iTunes. If you're listening to this on YouTube, uh, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. It really helps. Uh, with the algorithm and helps the the podcast get exposure. If you're listening on Spotify, you know, do the same thing um, and just um, uh, rate and review the podcast. It really helps to leave a review and to rate it and subscribe, okay, or like it. So I, I want to talk a little about. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna. This won't be a very long episode, but it's a super super important episode because we're gonna talk about something that that you may not think applies to you, but I guarantee you applies to you now for the majority of people listening to this right now. Because you might be thinking, well, I'm too young for a midlife crisis or a midlife awakening, however you want to put it. I'm too young for this. And um, I actually had a, <laughs> it's kind of a funny thing, but I've had a few people over the last several months uh, ask me or insinuate that I was going through a midlife crisis <laughs> or awakening. It depends on how you want to interpret that. Uh, I, I got a new car recently and uh, it's kind of a fast car, sports car. And, um, you know, the stereotypes are that people, men especially going through a midlife crisis, they end up getting a sports car or whatever, you know, sometimes they get a girlfriend or whatever. I, I assure you that's not happening in my case. I'm happily married and uh, but I did get a new car recently and uh, no the answer to the question is I'm not going through a midlife crisis or even for that matter a midlife awakening now I'm a fan I'm a huge fan though however of what I call midlife awakenings I'm a huge fan of that for the obvious reasons right but what is it right what is it but before I even get into the kind of the meat and potatoes of what is the difference between a midlife crisis and a midlife awakening. We'll talk about that, but I wanna just kinda of talk about when. People typically think of midlife as being like mid 40s to mid 50s, right? That's, at least that's, that's that was my assumption. That's kinda of how I grew up thinking about midlife. When people would have a midlife crisis, middle-aged men were considered men in their, you know, mid to late 40s, early 50s. And I'm really not sure why that is considered midlife because that is not midlife. You know what midlife is? And this is, this is true, right? On average, um, you know, obviously there's exceptions to this. On average, do you know what midlife is? Midlife today in the United States and the Western world, midlife is between 35 and 38 or 39 years old. That is midlife. If you're in the age span between 35 and 38, 39 years old, you are in the mid of your life. You're in the middle of your life. You are midlife. So if you want to have a midlife crisis or midlife awakening, now's the time. If you're between the ages of 35 and 38, 39, now is your opportunity for a midlife crisis or awakening. Isn't that good news, right? Now, we don't think of 35 to 38, 39 as midlife. That is midlife. Because the life expectancy in the United States is going down, right? For, for the majority of people. It's in the, you know, I don't want to, I, I have, I pulled this up in research of this podcast, uh, but I don't have the numbers in front of me. So, but it's in the, it's in the uh, low 70s, right? So if you are a standard American that is eating, you know, fairly healthy, you know, you're going to the grocery store buying, you know, regular food. And by regular, I mean non or not organic, but just regular food. That means it's been sprayed with pesticides. 
it's not marked it's just normal food right it's not organic it's just normal if you're buying normal food maybe you're eating processed food you go out to eat fast food every once in a while you you know cook with seed oils you eat stuff that's been cooked in seed oils which most almost everything is if you're if you're doing that if you're going to the you know you trust your doctors you go to the doctors they prescribe you with prescriptions you take the shots the prescribed shots and the prescribed medications that are you know to keep you safe from diseases if you're doing that yeah your midlife for you is about 35 to 38 you know if you want to extend that if you want to live beyond that you have to actually do some some things that are very different right you have to really source your food and eat really clean food and that is that takes intentionality you just can't buy the regular food at the grocery store you can't just eat processed food you can't just entrust yourself to the um, the pharmaceutical sick care system right that's not going to get you to health right people who do that their health goes down right just i'm sorry to say that's how it is so yeah our life expectancy is shrinking here in the united states even though we spend more money on health care we're actually living uh, this is one of the first generations that are actually going to live uh, less than their parents' generation. It's going down. So midlife today, 35 to 38 years old. I don't say that as bad news or good news. It's just the fact. If you want to live longer than that, you have to do different things, right? That's just the way it goes. Okay, but that's not what the subject of this podcast is about, but I wanted to say it. What is this podcast about? Well, I want to talk about what is the difference between a midlife crisis and a midlife awakening what is the difference it's a great question right all human beings are built in and this is just something that i've observed in my life and by the way i'm not going through a midlife crisis or awakening because i'm not between the ages i told somebody the other day they said are you going through midlife crisis I said absolutely not i'm way past midlife i'm not going to tell you my age right right here uh, on the podcast but i am not in the age bracket for midlife, I am, I am way past midlife. That was years ago for me. So, uh, but what is a midlife crisis or awakening? Well, human beings, we're the only species, and this, obviously I'm not saying anything you don't know, but we're the only species that has conscious awareness of our, of our impending death. Now, if you're listening to this episode right now, you know this, but I want to say this again. You are dying. Every day you, you live is one day closer to the grave. You are the, you are the closest to the grave than you have ever been in your entire life right now. I want you to know that. It doesn't matter when you're listening to this. In this very moment, as you're listening to this podcast, you are the closest to the grave than you have ever been. Now that may be bad news for you, or it could just be news depending on your perception. But this is the fact for all human beings, right? We're all heading towards our death. Now, what makes us different than other species on the planet, other animals, is that we actually have the ability to have conscious awareness of our impending death. Now, what does that do for us, right? Well, within our system, the way it's built into us as human beings, you know how cars sometimes, like after you drive 20,000, 30,000 miles, 50,000 miles, whatever it may be, you know, there's a little check engine light that is actually programmed in the car to come on. And that check engine light is a, is a indicator that you need to take your car in to the mechanic to have it checked out every so many miles to reevaluate. So we can look at the parts. How are the brakes? How are the, how's the suspension? How's the engine, the transmission, whatever it may be. But that check engine light is designed to come come on to get you to reevaluate or to check on the status of your of your machine, right? In your car. That's what it's designed, that's why it comes on. But human beings also, and this has been an observation that myself, but not just myself, many others have made over, over the course of time, that they have recognized that human beings seem to also have like this quote unquote check engine light that comes on around mid midway through the life of the vehicle the vehicle meaning the body right your body your body has a has a lifespan and about midway through the check engine light starts to come on and as this check engine light comes on it's asking you 
to reevaluate or to look in and see how things are going. Now, if you're between the ages of 35 to 40, 38, 39, and you're starting to notice a difference in yourself, some people chalk it up to like, oh, I'm just growing up or I'm getting more mature. But part of that process of growing up, getting more mature, is to get you to look at your life, right? Because when you're young, when you're in your like teenage years or your early 20s or 20s for that matter, you, there's a perception that your life is long and that you don't you don't really think about you know morbid things like death. You don't really think about what what's the point of life or, unless you're really spiritually wired. Most people aren't. Most people aren't thinking about that. Most people are really not even thinking. They're just operating from programming. They're operating from tendencies, the way things have been. They're not actually getting conscious about what is my life and who am I and what is it that I'm doing here? We're not asking those fundamental questions. Now for me, for whatever reason, I literally was born asking those questions. I was asking those midlife questions when I was six years old. Believe it or not, I was. I've had many conversations with my parents, my mom especially, as a little boy going, what is this about? What are we doing here? And I questioned everything and I wanted to know. And I was asking the deeper questions. Who am I and what are we doing here? And that, I was always very spiritually, if you want to use that term, I know that has baggage, but I was always just very curious about the deeper dimensions of life. But I'm not unique. Maybe I just started doing it at a young age, but all of us, if we're honest, have these questions because when we're faced with our our impending death death will actually make you ask these questions for i have never met a human being that will not go through the death process and when you go through the death process those questions will become very important to you doesn't matter who you are questions like what is my life what's important to me what do I value? What does it mean to live well? Right? When you're facing death, money doesn't mean very much to you. Again, I'm a fan of money and I think we should love money and do well with money. And I, I'm, a, I'm all a fan of all of that. I don't, I'm not, I don't have anything against money. I've not taken any poverty vows, <laughs> right? That's uh, not something I subscribe to. But I will say this, that in its proper perspective, money is just a story we're telling it's really not that important because money is just a story we're telling about life. What's important is life. When you're on your deathbed or when your life is over, money doesn't matter. Assets don't matter. The opinions of other people really don't matter at that point. What matters is questions of identity. Who am I? And have I lived into my potential? And have I left the world a better place? These, and, and, and what is the point and purpose of my life? These are things that really deeply matter in the face of death, right? So when people go through a midlife crisis or awakening, however you want to put that, this is the questions that start coming into view. They start coming into view. What is my life and what matters? And am I leveraging my life for things that really matter? These are deep questions. Do I make a difference in people's lives? Do, if I was gone, would people really be affected? Things like that, legacy, all of these questions, these are associated with what kind of life am I living, right? So let's talk, let's talk about a midlife crisis. It's gotten a bad rap. I don't like the term midlife crisis, but I understand it because for a lot of people, it is a crisis. It feels like a crisis. Why is it a crisis? Why would we call the check engine light that is designed to come on about midway through our life? Why would we call that a crisis? It's actually a gift. Why would we call it a crisis? Well, it's a crisis because, and this is unfortunately, the majority of people that have lived and are living are going through life as if death is not going to happen or it's going to happen to somebody else or it's going to happen to us way in the future maybe when we're a hundred right we kind of have this idea that we get a hundred years first of all uh no you don't uh very few people get a hundred years yeah, the life expectancy is not a hundred again or else midlife would be 50 and it's not it's 35 
to 38 or 39. But most people assume we get 100 years. And so, you know, they think, oh, well, mid, you know, my death is 100 years in the future. And, you know, I don't have to think about it or it's going to happen to somebody else. And this is why when we start to be confronted with our mortality around midlife, it causes a crisis inside because then we start to panic because we haven't lived in such a way that if that if we were to to be on our deathbed we would have no regrets right there'd be a lot of regrets and so people start to crisis they have a crisis of what what do i have to show for my life what do i have to show for it what have i been doing and i don't have that much time left right i don't have that much time left because if 40 years is more than your if you're past midlife at 40 years old, that means you have less time in front of you than you do behind you. That's the perception, at least, time-wise, chronologically, in years, right? This is why people have a crisis and they start to freak out a little bit. And then when we don't have, we're not in touch with who we are and we, we have bought into the paradigms of, oh, I just need a better, maybe I need a better car. I just got a new car, right? So I think that's why people would say, are you having a midlife crisis, right? But a lot of people are like, oh man, you know, what do I have to show for my life? Uh, maybe I need a better car. So some people in a midlife crisis go out and get a new car or they get a new house or they they do lots of things. Maybe they jettison their relationship and get into another relationship or something. This is what people typically do, thinking that that's going to give their life meaning. And it doesn't. It's nice to get a new car, but it's not you. It's not going to give your life meaning. It's nice to have a, a you know a beautiful home, but that doesn't give your life meaning. You think it does, it doesn't, because all of those things are temporary, right? They're all temporary. Midlife crisis. The reason it's a crisis for so many people is because the perception also is that my life is be the 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 my prime the best years of my life are actually behind me. And so many people, when they, if they're being honest, when they look at their life, they feel like their life is winding down, that the best years have been, are behind them. And they long to live in that heyday. They reminisce about the past. For those folks, midlife is a crisis. But it doesn't have to be a crisis. It can be an awakening for you. Midlife can actually be an awakening for you. What will make it an awakening? Well, it's perception. If you understand that your past was a setup for the rest of your life, your past was a setup for this moment to bring you to the consciousness and awareness that you have in this moment. If you see the past as a setup to your life, which is contained in this moment, and which will unfold for you into the future, then midlife can be an awakening. Because your life is not in the past, it's actually unfolding for you right now. Now you may think that that's just semantics, it's not, it's perception. Your life is not behind you because where is the past, right? The past is behind us, right? But where is that actually? It doesn't exist. The past is a figment of our imagination. It only exists in the records of the mind, right? You can't find the past anywhere. You can't get to it. You can't go to it. It doesn't exist. And even when you were experiencing things in the past, it was not the past. It was still the present moment. You've never experienced life. And I know you know this, but I'm saying it to bring our attention and awareness to it. You have never experienced life in the past. You've only experienced life in this moment. In the same way, you have never experienced life in the future because there's never any future. Life only exists in this moment. That's it. And if you can perceive that your past is just in the mind, it's just records, it's just memories that have led you to this moment's awareness, this present moment awareness, and that all your whole life is actually beginning right now. Now it's cliche, but a lot of people say, you know, today is the first day of the rest of your life. You've probably heard that, right? Today's the first day of the rest of your life. But it's true, isn't it not? 
Yesterday's gone. There is no past. So today's the first day. For the rest of your life, today will be the first day of the rest of your life. So if your life's in front of you, and yes, it is limited, and yes, there is an expiration date. We call that de death. And you're, close, you're the closest to it you've ever been. If you can understand that, and yet understand that your life starts over today. It's in front of you today. What will you do with this life that you have today? What will you do with it? See, that's all that matters. And if you can start to think about your life today and what you want to experience, what, what kind of world do you want to leave behind? How do you want to contribute to the world in such a way that it leaves it better than you found it? If you start asking those questions today, now, you could be having a midlife awakening. Wouldn't that be something? To have a midlife awakening, not a crisis, an awakening. And maybe you'll realize that you've been conducting your relationships unconsciously. Maybe you'll realize that you're in a career or professional path that really doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. It's really not something you're passionate about. It's okay, but it pays the bills. But if you if you if you were if you had a, a, a month left to live or a year left to live, you probably wouldn't be doing it. Well, if that's the case, then it's time to time to wake up and get out of that pattern. If you've been going through the motions in your significant relationship, your romantic partnership, your marriage, whatever it may be for you, and you're just going through the motions, well, that relationship is temporary. It's time to wake up. What do you want it to be? How do you want it to be in this world? How do you, what kind of a lover, husband, wife, spouse, father, parent, mother, whatever? What kind, what kind do you want to be? How do you want this to be? It's time to wake up. Midlife awakening. Are you going through a midlife awakening or a midlife crisis? Look, if you haven't yet had a midlife awakening, Today's a great day to start. Let's, let's have it. I'm a fan of it. If you're between the ages of 35 and 38, 39, you're, in pri you're, you're the prime age to start asking these deeper questions. If you're younger than that, that's okay too. You can start asking those questions as well. I was six years old when I started asking those questions, maybe even younger. But if you're around midlife, 35, to 38, 39, now's your time. It's time to wake up. I hope this is helpful. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to, to have further conversations on this podcast in the weeks ahead. I invite you to stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed. It's one of the reasons I, and I'm biased, but I, I am a life coach. It's, it's a very, very rewarding profession. It's something I take a lot of, a lot of pride in and uh, get a lot of satisfaction out of. But I do this work because it's important, all right? Cause, cause, because our lives are important. Your life is important. And if you can wake up and begin to invest into your life, that's the greatest day in the world. You will not have wasted your life. If you invest in your life, if you start to question your life, if you start to wake up and have an awakening, into the things that really matter in light of your impending death, then you know your life will be a source of joy for you and, and others. And I invite you, if this is something that you want, you want to have at your own uh, midlife awakening, then I invite you to, to consider investing into yourself. It's not too it's not too early or and it's not it's never too late to invest in your life. I don't care if you're way past midlife like me. I mean you may be in your 70s and 80s. Your life is upon you. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. And isn't your life worth the investment to wake up? And if I can be of assistance to you as a coach, or if you're interested in the possibility of coaching, obviously I, I stay pretty busy and I can't work with everybody, but if you feel like maybe I could be of, that could be of service for me, 
I invite you to go to the website, which is jamaljavanji.com. It's my personal website, first name and last name, jamaljavanji.com. Have a look around the site. You can get in touch with me. You can look, read more up on coaching and get some more information there. If you'd like, reach out to me and we'll have a conversation about it, okay? All right. Thank you again for tuning in. And until next time, take care.